Welcome back to the show. I am your host, Maddie P. And we are searching for food, trying to build our connection with what sustains us on this lovely planet that we call Earth. And I was actually on a surf mission today in Ala Moana Point, which is near Dunedin in southern New Zealand on the South Island. And there was no waves to be had. So I was driving by and I see this huge mud flat and there are people with buckets. So obviously there is something out there, something tasty, something harvestable. So I went out and asked a few people and sure enough, they're digging for clams. In this mud flat, you wait for low tide. You just walk out to the water's edge and just start digging. As far as tools go, the only thing you need are these, your sweet hands. Hopefully you have them still. And I myself have a glass clam jar which I'm going to harvest with. I guess anything will do. I guess the pros have buckets, uh, but this is what I had kicking in the car, so this is what I will do. I usually just drink giant coffees out of this. I see some people have dogs out there. I don't know if the dogs are helping or if they're just playing around in the water, but I'm gonna give it a shot, and I guess the cooking thing I'll have to figure out later on. My pants are rolled up into clam diggers, and I'm ready to rock. So what am I looking for here when I'm clam digging? Like you've obviously succeeded in a huge way today. Yeah. What's the trick? There's nothing. There's thousands of them out there. You <laughs> just gotta find, go to find the biggest, the biggest shell you can find, and that's where the big ones are. And that's it. So you're looking for big, sort of the dead shells just laying yeah, there. Yeah, they land there, but then there's quite a few that are just like a wee bit sticking out of the surface. Oh, okay. Like that wee bit, it'll be sticking out of the surface. Maybe uh -huh. that bit there. And you'll just see thousands of them. Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> so that's all there is to it. That sounds pretty simple. <laughs> <laughs> now, do the dogs help? No. <laughs> no, it didn't as I thought they might have helped us take, but it didn't. Well, yeah. Okay. Great Thank to you. Have you. a beautiful Thank day. Cheers. 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 Happy Easter. I feel something. Yes, scored already. Check out this steeze. Just wiggle the foot, get all the dust off, shake it around, let it clear, and it's clam party. Look at this, it's crazy. It's like one dig. I'm from North America, so I've been calling these things clams, but here in New Zealand, they're actually called cockles or little neck clams, but most people just call them cockles. They do actually move around. They have one foot that they sort of stick out in between their two shells, and then that's what allows them to burrow into the sand when they need to. Uh, they take about two to five years to mature, and when they're smaller, they actually get eaten up by predators a lot. Apparently these New Zealand Little neck clams can actually live to be 25 years old, but they're good eating from age two to five. I don't know how you tell. Basically, everyone says just pick the biggest ones you can get and you're good. Okay. So you just crack them against each other. Well, any hammer rub go, right? Okay. <laughs> and you can see the meat here. Yeah. Looks pretty good. And they're really easy to find. I'm actually amazed. So you just pull it out. You'll just flick your nail under it. Yeah. Bon appetit. Yeah. All ready? Oh yeah. Just pat on the back. <laughs> Good for cleaning out the end. 
pepper and lower and test lines, isn't it? <laughs> okay. Are we going to take those home and eat them? Yeah, I'm going to try to cook them up tonight. Yeah, well, so what you do when, when you get home, if you get a few more, whatever, for the sand side of it, just get a bowl and put them in and, and put fresh fresh water in them. Okay. They'll open up overnight and they'll release all the sand. Ah. Looks like you've done pretty well. Oh no, that's quite small actually. Really? They oh, yeah. can get a lot bigger than that. It's good. Oh, that's a big one. Yeah, these are two different sizes. Don't take that one, take that one. <laughs> Got my little fresh water system hooked up in the van here. So that's it. Just toss it in the chili bin and figure out how to cook it, I guess. I have spent the afternoon just exploring, looking for surf to no avail. Did find some sea lions though, that was pretty cool. Just hanging out on the beach, all lazy and fat and fighting each other, so that was all right. My clams have been soaking in water all afternoon, so they should be pretty much good to go. Hopefully they've spit out any grit or sand that they had inside. Now as far as cooking goes, the raw one it was okay, it was kind of gritty. Uh, I'm going to cook it up in some white wine and some garlic and some fancy parsley garnish just because that's how I'm rolling today and hopefully it turns out. Alright, so I got my clam jar here or cockle jar I guess you could call it and I'm going to give them a good scrub first before I start the process. And of course you got to have some white wine, so I'm using a Southern Cross 2014 Marlboro Sauve Blanc. I don't know if it's any good, but it was $7, so it must be. Okay. I gotta get into this. I mean, come on. Cooking without drinking? What is that? Don't mind my fancy wine glass. So again, I really don't know what I'm doing here. Supposedly, you just throw them in a pot on high heat, put some red wine in it, salt, pepper, herbs, whatever you wanna do, and yeah, let's see if it works. This wine's pretty good for seven bucks. All right, this is good. The $20 stove is working. Getting some bubbly bubs. It's getting some steam. It's a good sign. All right, that needs some clams in the mix. It's go time. Now I definitely should have got a bigger pot, but when you're kicking it in a van, there's only so much you can do. So apparently they're just supposed to open up once they're cooked, and it may take about five minutes. Okay, I don't know if I'm supposed to peek, but I got to see if they're opening. Not yet. Bubbling nice though. Oh, they're moving. I just saw one open up. 
Here's another open one. Now, if they don't open up, don't eat them because they're either bad or... No, they're bad. Don't eat them. Look at that guy. Popped right open. I feel so professional right now. So I hope peeking at it didn't ruin it, but there was a few that popped and I just got to be patient. Hopefully the rest pop out too. I don't think the wind's been very good for this little stove. I hope I'm not overdoing it. That actually looks good. I think they all popped, except for maybe one. All right, this is it. Let's see how it goes. No knife, no fork, no plates. Who needs it? We're outside. Not bad at all. So easy, too. All right, I am going back to the patch, and I'm going to go get my 150 limit, so I can actually go share this with some people. That was actually incredibly easy, way easier than I thought. Now, thanks to some local knowledge, of course, it wasn't so much about finding them, uh, it was more about getting to the right spot to find them, because once I was in that salt flat area, they were everywhere. There was literally a bajillion of them. I could feel them under my feet if I stood in a sandy spot for long enough. And any time you stick your hand in the sand, you're basically pulling up some clams. So, incredible. 